Welcome to Trash Bin News. My name is Winnie Wenninger. And I'm Malik Mitchell. We have lots to cover tonight, so stay tuned. After 131 years, NDSU campus is closing next week due to the aroma of COVID variant being in every building. Not only does COVID have an unpleasant smell, it can cause sickness rapidly around campus. The president of NDSU has also made a statement saying they would not refund students' tuitions. The president claimed they are deeply sorry for the series of events, but they plan to run scot-free with the money. Zoom classes are still in debate. When NDSU reopens in the fall, there will be one notable change. It will no longer be called North Dakota State University, but instead Dakota State University. This is due to President Biden's administrative decision to combine North and South Dakota into one mega coda. This will also allow for Puerto Rico to become the 50th state and avoid the legal work of changing the United States flag to have 51 stars. President Dean Bershani has just made a new and exciting career announcement. While he is stepping down for the presidential role, he will be stepping up to an even more important campus role, being the next Thundar. Brashani said he was inspired by Tom Brady's quick return to his passion and felt like he should do the same. This way he can still inter interact with students and keep the attention of the football team. Starting fall 2022, NDSU's Card Center will be featuring a new service. Student government has finally had one of their main selling points pushed through. Alongside replacing ID cards, underage students can now utilize identity document forgery. The fake IDs can pass authentic scanners and also have a free tracking number. This new service will only be charging $50 per ID, with the first one being half off if you use the code TURF. Incoming students will have a brand new program to major in this next school year. Coy Hartle has more on what this new major is all about. Beginning in the fall semester of this year, NDSU is set to offer a brand new major to current and incoming students. This new program will allow students to major in influencing, which is designed to set up students for a career in social media as an influencer. This program will definitely go a long way in bringing NDSU students into the 21st century. Kids today spend a lot of time scrolling through social media like TikTok and Instagram, so it's exciting to provide an opportunity for them to follow their passion. Dr. Paul Atreides isn't the only one excited for the influencer major. Brad Hill, an NDSU student, is also looking forward to the program. I think it's a great idea. Uh, the reason why is because nowadays, who's not on their phone? Uh, you're always trying to, or you're always scrolling through social media, TikTok, Instagram. Now Snapchat's kind of got its own little reels, Facebook. and. I just want to make a brand for myself and I feel like this major would give me that opportunity. Some of the courses in the major will include introduction to TikTok dance, audience engagement, and selfies. The program will be offered through the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences and students are already able to register for the classes. So currently, I am a third, on my third year, this is my going to be going into my fourth, uh, fourth year of the Business Administration program here at NDSU. And honestly, I think this influencer um, major is going to be just better for me personally. I think I can make a better living off of learning how to influence people. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start over my degree basically on my third year and I can't be more excited about it. Students who join the program will be able to get jobs as professional TikTokers, YouTubers, and Instagrammers, just to name a few. And for students like Brad, taking this career path is a no-brainer. I just don't really like working the 9 to 5, and this would just be so beneficial, this course here at NDSU. And I just like sleeping and staying up at night, not having to wake up for class at 8 a.m., and... Oh, all those things would be so good, no cap. And man, I just couldn't think of a better opportunity for myself and hopefully a lot of other people here at NDSU. From Bison Information Network, I'm Corey Hartle. Thanks, Corey. It will be cool to see NDSU offering a major that's very relevant to today's time. The Fargo Police Department has lost every policeman as of this morning in response to the opposing views of the Chris Rock and Will Smith controversy. There has been statements saying the job is simply too hard to maintain now that people know they can slap back. 
It is expected that they will be contacting substitute teachers to pick up the slack on the force. This Friday, April 1st at 6 p.m., the Fargo-Moorhead area community is putting on its fifth annual Second Winter Ice Fishing Tournament on the Red River. The kids' division will compete first in order to test the density of the ice. Smaller prizes will include handmade sunglasses, sunscreen, potting soil, and plants. The grand prize is a speedboat that will be ready for use on the water sometime in the next two weeks, whenever it decides to warm up. It is expected to have a large turnout. With upcoming flooding expectations, Fargo natives are taking to the Red River Bank. The Fargo affordable uh, housing community is arranging a protest against the rising water. They are making it clear that this is not about global warming, but instead will focus on keeping the housing market dry. Homemade signs and sandbags to throw are welcome. The cult classic movie Fargo is being brought to life in a fun new way. Downtown Fargo is demolishing some old historical buildings to make room for Fargo land. This attraction will be a large amusement park with roller coasters and attractions that reflect aspects of the movie. After interviewing children on the street, we have discovered that the ride they are most excited for is the wood chipper. When we come back, Dash will have your weekly sports update. I'm your friend. I am your coworker. I'm your neighbor. There's no set person that that defines who needs help in North Dakota. Every little thing we do is I play cards with your grandmother every week. Hunger is becoming more and more widespread and and more known because there are people standing up and saying, hey, this can't happen. We can't be having this in, in our state, in our community. I sit next to you in math class. So it's proving that they're learning better and they're not coming to school so hungry on Monday morning. We're engaging them and we're, we're helping them learn. I mean, people want to help their fellow citizens and in this food bank, in this agency, that is exactly what's happening. Is people really, truly care. I'm here. I'm here to change the faces. I'm here to change the faces of hunger. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. One heart to heart, one inside joke. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. It's time. Become a big today. Good evening and welcome back to Trashman News. Now on to sports. NDSU football welcomes a new recruit to the team out of Louisiana, linebacker Bobby Boucher. Boucher was the water boy for his high school team, but Coach Matt Ent says that he likes the energy that Boucher brings to the team, especially when you say mean things about him and his mama. Boucher will be available for media at the press conferences this weekend at the Shield Center. Speaking of the Shield Center, the Harlem Globetrotters will be performing there at 8 p.m. Monday night. It'll be a triple header in which the Globetrotters will be playing three games against local high school. Schools. Those high schools include West Fargo, North Fargo, and Fargo Davies. Baseball was to play a three-game series against Northern Colorado this past weekend, but we're only able to get one game in before Northern Colorado's scoreboard powered down due to how many runs there were being scored by the Bison's team. The score was 71-2 when the outage occurred. The rescheduled games will be released at a later, uh, later date. Golf traveled to Anchorage, Alaska to play in the Kodiak Invitational. All the teams had to play with colored golf balls due to the snow that was on the course. Play was also temporarily stopped twice because of grizzly bears on the course, but the teams were able to finish the tournament and thankfully everybody survived. NDSU placed first in the tournament in front of only two other teams at the tournament, the University of Alaska Anchorage and the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Well, that's all for sports this week. Up next, Koi will give you the seven day weather outlook. Stay tuned. 
My name is Becky Parker, and I'm a news anchor at WDAY-TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting, and mass communication technologies, and then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews. You're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment. It's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The Bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. Look at what we can expect for the next seven days. Before we dive in, I know it looks like there's a lot going on. On March 29th, the Biden administration pushed through an executive order that designates the first week in April as a makeup holiday week. This is in response to the latest pushback from essential workers who were forced to miss the original holidays. President Biden hopes the double holidays will allow the, the workers to have a greater chance of getting some time off. Starting with tomorrow, President said we'll warm up a lot from what we've been seeing throughout this past week as highs will reach the mid-70s. However, we will have some clouds throughout the day on the whole day. Now, on Saturday, I didn't have a graphic to describe the day, so I just did the best I could with what I had. As you can see by the suns, Halloween will be extremely warm with a high of 432 degrees due to the solar, flare, solar flares taking place on the sun. As we move into the evening, we should get a little cloud cover, which should help cool things off just a bit. On Thanksgiving Day, temps will drop more than 300 degrees to just above the 100 degree mark. When we mix that in with some possible rain, it will definitely help cool us off from the previous day. On Veterans Day, we have a good chance for some thunderstorms beginning in the late afternoon. However, we're likely to see lots of hail mixed in with that storm, so be sure to stay indoors. On Tuesday, which is Groundhog's Day, we can expect things to start to get back to normal. The sun will be out for most of the day with many clouds, without many clouds in the sky. Temperatures will stick right around that 40 degree mark until they drop down in the evening. On Tuesday, which is Groundhog's Day, we can expect things to start to get back to normal. The sun will be out for most of the day with many without many clouds in the sky. Temperatures will stick right around that 40 degree mark until they drop down in the evening. And finally, on Thursday, we'll have a moon visible throughout much of the day, but the sun will likely be tucked behind some clouds during the day. So as you can see, we have quite the wild week coming up, so hopefully things start to die down soon. I do have one more thing I want to share with you all. On Christmas Day, NASA launched the James Webb Telescope, and, we, and they have received the first image from the multi-billion dollar project. And it, it sounds like we actually have the image right here. And I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It moved before flight, it looks like. Well, that seems like quite a big mistake, and it looks like someone might be getting fired for that. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in to our April Fool's edition of Bison Information Network. We definitely had a lot of fun putting it together. And be sure to come back next week when we tell you how NDSU plans to form its own cryptocurrency that will become the exclusive method of payment on NDSU campus and for tuition. Thank you all for watching, and have a great night.